Hey there, Evil Dragon here with a new video about the Pyra. Um, it's been quite a while since I made my last video, um, simply because most of the things happened on the computer with nothing to see. But as you can see, I've got a nice set of puzzle pieces here, uh, which I would now want to assemble with you together. So, let's start. Here's our first and probably one of the most important puzzle pieces. This is the main PCB. Um, it's a finished and working prototype. Um, not much will change with the final release. You can see the knob here, all the uh, keypad matrix, this is where the speakers will go. Um, you've got a vibration motor, our wonky chips, very important. Um, the digital microphone, um, the Wi-Fi antenna. On the other side, we got the space where the CPU PCB plugs in. These two hall sensors are for the knobs. This is only the mechanical part. And this is actually what will read out the nut details. LTE module, uh, antenna for that. Volume wheel, Wi-Fi module, um, SIM card and SD, micro SD card slot, battery contact. So everything already on there. Two shoulder buttons on each side one. Um, of course, two shoulder buttons on the other side as well. Then the connector for the LCD cable, headset port or the other ports. Well, and this is the only one that will not be there in the final release. It will uh, be a USB. Well, basically, it will look like a USB 3 port, but with the OMEP 5 only supplying OMEP a USB 2 and with an adapter eSATA. So, this will work as well. Then, we got a dummy. This is only a dummy yet, as you can see, nothing's populated here of the final CPU PCB. Um, this has a connector here where we can connect it to our development board and actually test all the components on the PCB here already with the uh, OMEP 5 CPU. So we can make sure this one works before even the CPU board is finished. Um, everything else already works. You've got the plugs here where you can simply plug it on top of the PCB and it sits really tight. You can not easily remove it um, and of course that has to be the case um, so it won't fall out and it will be really sturdy. Okay, so much for the PCB. Next, we've got the uh, display PCB, SD cable connector. This is where the rotator chip will sit. Not populated on this one um, because this is a testing board without. This is where the touch screen is connected and this is where the um, display actually is connected as well. We can see two RGB LEDs here, which will be for the backlighting of the of the logo. Then on the other side is the LCD with the touchscreen. Mine's got a crack already because I uh, applied a bit too much force when trying to assemble it. Um, the display PCB is exactly the same size as the display. Um, why we will find out in a few seconds. And well, that needs time to move on to the case. Here's the case. There's the logo. This part already broke off because the uh, printed cases are really flimsy this time. Uh, last ones didn't break off because they are not. Um, but don't worry about that in the final release, because in the final release we will have this one as transparent logo going in there and these will be glued together. So this will be basically one uh, seamless part with the uh, flames tra being transparent, so we got the two RGB LEDs to lit them. And as you can see there are only screw holes on this side. The screw hole already also broke uh, because the case is so flimsy. And when assembling, we simply use the display, connect the SD cable to it, put it in there in the frame, and then we've got the top frame, which simply goes on top. Well, and now you can see a bit of the reason why my touchscreen cracked. There's something I want to change. As you can see, there's a frame in here and a tiny frame in here. So, if you are not careful when assembling the unit like this, then you apply too much force here when pressing down, if the frame will not sit accurately on it, and then the touchscreen will break. This is one thing that will be changed in the final case. The final case will have the full frame here, so that the uh, display lies in here, and this frame will be removed. This will only be a top which will be applied on top of the screen, so there will be no force applied on the display and um, then it won't break when, we, when you are not careful assembling it. 
so the display part of the case will be the part where the, uh, may, uh, the, the most changes still happen, but it's still nothing major, just removing the frame here and making it high here so the display will sit in there and then all you need to do is put the lid frame on top. Okay, let's assemble it without the display now. Fits perfectly. And move on to the next piece, which is this, the keyboard part. Um, at first glance it doesn't look that much different from Pandora's, but if you look closely, the edges are a lot more rounded, so if you have your palms here, it won't hurt anymore when playing, like it did on the Pandora. Um, then of course, speaker holes, fourth key roll, nubs, and well, the speakers are here. As the speakers, as you can see, are simply uh, have a frame here. There will be some padding in there so that they will sit tightly. And the speakers itself are just these little things that go in here. Second one as well. And they got small contacts here. And if you take a look at the PCB, you can see there are also contacts on there. So all we need to do is put the speakers in there and then put the PCB on top. Now let's continue assembling. Here's a small dummy of the key mat, which was just used to uh, test the look and feel of the key mat. Final key mat is not ready. Of course, the D-pad goes in there. We will see if we can keep it like that or if we need to glue it again on the key mat as we did with the Pandora. Um, but that can only be done when the final case is ready uh, and not printed anymore, but really in the, in the mode, then you can see how it feels. Nubs go in here. This is just the top cap of the nub. Well, and then last part missing is the PCB, which also fits perfectly already, as you can see. Only thing is um, you need to turn the nub a bit so that they will fit. The left one fits, the other one fits as well. And now it's inserted. Here you go. There's the Nup with a click, working fine. Here's the key mat, working fine. D-pad, of course, doesn't have a key mat yet, so it doesn't work really. And the uh, PCB is already inside the case. Next part of the case, of course, is the back side here, which will get the shoulder buttons inserted. Um, I need to think, okay, one shoulder, shoulder button here. Of course, same shoulder button on the other side. Then the next shoulder button on top. And the last one, oh, this, this is the correct one. It happens when you got the puzzle pieces lying around. No, it's not. That's the correct one, yeah. Okay, and that one on top as well. So, now I can see the lower shoulder button and the top shoulder button. If you've got them in your hands, you can easily feel them, feels great, and you can easily switch between them. Now, if we go back to the PCB, you can see here is the LCD connector, and this is where the shoulder button will go. Actually, the LCD cable connector will come up through that small part and go in here. And yes, we tried it with a piece of paper. It works, it really works. But let's go back first here, because one last piece was missing, and this is actually that peg here. It goes in there. Um, next is to assemble this thing. So basically all we need to do is put this one on top as with the Pandora. And you can see the SIM card slot, the battery contacts, everything is there. Everything is angled with the shoulder buttons as well. The knob, the uh, SD card slots, everything fits together nicely. Well, and the final part, the battery compartment and this one fits as well. Yeah, now you can see how flimsy that case is. You can't even close the battery compartment here, so um, don't worry about anything breaking off. Um, this is just the 3D printed case. The other ones I had were not as accurate, but um, were a lot better in regards of uh, stability. But uh, I guess for the, I will print another case, so to see how well the parts fit. Well, 
One thing we didn't do yet is put in the top into the case. This actually is a bit harder in the prototype case because it's not that accurate. But one thing that's important, um, this is where the hinge will be, even if this one is fully inserted, you can completely open the top case, which is very hard on the prototype as well without breaking anything, because this will not be like on the Pandora below here. So you can remove the complete lid and access the LCD without having to open up the lower part of the case. So that's it for the case with shoulder buttons, with everything. Well, and I hope you enjoyed our little puzzle show. So things are coming together nicely. It shouldn't be too far away until we got a final prototype with the PCB and the case finished. And well, then it's time for the mass production and the pre-ordering. So stay tuned for that. If you want to take a look at the case yourself and at the prototype I've shown you here, then you can come to Leipzig on the 25th of April because there's the Lange Nacht der Computerspiele, which translates to a long night of computer games. And I'll be there with a Pyra prototype and you can take a visit and play a lot of retro games there on the way as well. So if you happen to be in Germany and not too far away from Leipzig, you should come there. It's really fun. See you soon.